most people come to Tokyo, they go to Shibuya, Shinjuku, Harajuku, and that's all well and good. I would highly recommend those areas. I think I covered most of those in my 24 hours guide to Tokyo. But if you have more than 24 hours and if you want to see a more local part of the city, I would highly recommend checking out some of the neighborhoods that I'm going to show you today. When I got my working holiday visa when I was 20, uh, I stayed in an apartment here in Otsuka that I had my friend Zhenya help me set up, who you'll actually be meeting later today. But yeah, I wanted to show you guys my old neighborhood. I really hope one of my favorite ramen spots is still here where they have tomato cheese ramen, which I haven't seen anywhere else. But first and foremost, let me see from memory if I can actually find where my old apartment used to be. What about the self-confident girl? Guess you really need to be with her. She's so clever and so strong. Well, you really need to. Well, you really need to meet her. All men are obsessed. It's a pure Oh my goodness, it still exists. I am so happy to see the old place where I used to live. Though I can't remember which floor or balcony we were. I think we were the middle two, maybe the third or fourth floor. I can't quite remember. When I was living in this apartment, I was living uh, with a boyfriend. So we actually did end up getting the two bedroom that he had here because it wasn't that much more than the one bedroom. And if you've ever seen Japanese apartments, you know that they are definitely on the smaller side. But yeah, very nice to see my old apartment because the one, the first one that I actually lived in uh, in Akasaka, my modeling apartment, that's no longer there. They turned it into a big proper hotel so it's actually nice to come back to an apartment that still stands. But now I want to take you guys to hopefully an also open ramen shop, one of the best ramen shops here in Otsuka because there are quite a few, but they are known for specialty tomato ramen so I really hope it's still here. Oh my goodness, it is still here. That makes me so happy. Because <laughs> sadly some of the businesses, you know, over COVID had to shut down, but this place looks like it is still going strong. You can obviously find so many different kinds of ramen in Japan, but I can't say I've ever seen tomato <laughs> ramen anywhere else. And they have a whole bunch of you know, different ingredients that you also don't normally see, like tomato eggplant, spicy cheese, one with seafood and shrimp. Very, very cool. So I think I'm actually gonna try this one. Roasted mozzarella dandan dan noodles. I've never seen like ground beef in ramen before as well. So that'll be interesting. All right, how good does this look guys? It's almost like tomato soup you could say, right? Tomato ramen. It's got some lovely roasted mozzarella cheese. I think this is beef, some mushrooms, amazing. That 
is so good. <laughs> like literally this is one of the most unique dishes I think I've ever had in all of Japan. It still tastes as amazing as I remember so highly recommend you guys come to this place. Now I want to take you guys to Sugamo, which is a very unique area, otherwise known as Grandma's Harajuku. <laughs> have arrived to the seniors paradise my friends as i mentioned before this area is known as grandma's harajuku but it is really called sugamo uh, jizodori it's this beautiful pedestrian street that goes for about a kilometer but what makes this place especially interesting is that it is catered towards senior citizens. A lot of the shops that are here haven't been changed, you know, in 50 to 100 years, unlike most districts in Tokyo. And most of the restaurants and shops as well are tailored towards a senior citizen's tastes. So you're not gonna find any hipster sort of cafes in this area. You're gonna find a lot of traditional Japanese food uh, places and some really proper sort of cafes, but they do have their own mascot they do have uh, their mascot Sugamo who's a duck so you will see pictures of him everywhere So I'm not exactly sure why, but another fun thing that you will find on this street is a whole bunch of shops that sell red underwear. <laughs> So you remember how I said that they have a mascot here that's a duck? His name is Sugamon and there is quite literally a tourist attraction, a point on Google Maps, <laughs> called Sugamon's ass. Like I kid you not, they put a duck's butt <laughs> in a box. I don't know why, but it's a tourist attraction of this area. So that was Sugamo, Grandma's Harajuku. Hope you guys enjoyed it. But now I am going to get on the train and head to Itabashi, which is probably an even lesser known area for tourists. But now I am going to jump on the train and head to Itabashi, which is probably an even lesser known area for tourists because tonight uh, me and my friend Jenya actually got invited to a lovely uh, local brew house slash restaurant. They do brew their own craft of brew here. They have a restaurant. They even have a hotel. It's a whole complex sort of thing and they kindly invited us to check it out today because Jenya's a friend of theirs. But before I do, I really want to give a shout out to my friend Jenya who has an amazing bar here in Tokyo. They just had their five-year anniversary and it's such a special place. All right, friends, here I am at Craft Gin Bar Copain with my lovely friend, Jenya. <laughs> privet, privet. Privet, privet. Hi, guys. That's me, Jenya. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I've known Jenya, I think, for like 13 years. Oh, no, 12. 12, 12 yeah. probably about 12 years which is crazy when I think about it, how long it has been. And we met when we were both modeling here in Japan, 
but for the last five years, Zhenya has been running her own bar, her own craft gin bar, which is super cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, what initially made you want to start a bar? Like that's a big undertaking to take. Why did you choose to get into this business? So first, so I was like a teenager. Yeah, I was watching the movie and like all about like bars and like clubs, like party, but more about like people like getting into like one place, enjoying their time, having the drinks. It's just like super fun for me. Yeah. And then like when I I come to Japan, so I was like uh, was not drinking that time. And then like a few years later, I went to the bar and like seeing how like bartenders making the drinks, all about the like. Um, creation more about like their hands like the ingredients just like I was like observing that mm -hmm. but as you know like we was doing modeling so we was like having a good time we going to party but mm -hmm. at the same time just like working so I was not thinking so serious what I could do after like I done with modeling right mm -hmm. but then um, like 2013 in Japan like in Tokyo I went to a really cool bar and I saw the tiny nice bottle of like something so I never tried before I never like had and just like seeing some like monkey and like what did that so when I asked and the guys was like oh it's actually it's like new gene just like right from Japan so mm -hmm. it's like monkey 47 from Ooh. Germany mm. and then so I tried monkey and I'm like this is like my drinks this mm. is really my drinks yeah and I think it's more like start from like the gene that I like it first second it, it was really good for my body to have it, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that alcohol is good for you guys, but, <laughs> but. but you know. <laughs> Some is better like, than others. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's like, it's botanical water, it's a hard water, you know, yeah. plus alcohol, uh -huh, you know. Uh -huh. Well, you have an absolutely insane collection here of different bottles. If you had to take an estimate of how many you think you have, what would that number be approximately? Well, I guess now um, around like seven or like eight hundred. So I oh my gosh. stopped to counting <laughs> since I had like around like five hundred, I think. So if, when people come to Copain, uh, do you have a set menu or do you kind of just ask people what kind of drink they like and then you custom make a drink that you think that they would like mm -hmm. I do both of yeah. course you know like some people like exactly like they want exactly like some of the gene but of course I could recommend to them like what kind of gene would be nice for like gin soda or like gin tonic mm -hmm. sonic or like short cocktail whatever like to play with you know because mm -hmm. sometimes people come and like oh yeah I want some like martini but with that gene uh, and I know how that gene works in martini so this person would not be happy so I kind of like customize it I guess like more well, yeah. I can tell you guys personally that Jenya has an amazing bar. I've had such a good time here. I'm going to put the location in the description of the video. Make sure you come visit and tell her I sent you. <laughs> sure. Everyone, welcome. Welcome to come. Welcome to play uh, with me. You know, just like, let's try to find like what you guys like, what you don't like. But yeah, I promise I can make you good drinks. Fantastic. <laughs>
Unfortunately, it was in this moment that my camera decided to have some very strange issues cutting in and out, uh, the sound not working, and it was about halfway through the tour that I realized that this was going on. So unfortunately, I don't have the original sound for the first part of the tour, but Bob was a fantastic guy showing us all around the brewery, talking about the process of how the craft beer is made and all the different varieties varieties that they make. Itabashi Cask Village is a family-run business that has been here since 1971. Not only is it home to Tokyo Ale Works, which is a brewery as well as a restaurant where they have 22 different craft beers on tap. Another cool feature that they have here is M's Tasting Room, which is a specialty liquor store that has over 300 different kinds of whiskey from all around the world that you can actually taste test for a very small fee before you decide to purchase the whole bottle. And to cap off the experience after you've had a heavy night of drinking, they actually have a hotel within this village, which I think is genius because you literally can go from the bar to your bed. They have some regular Western style rooms as well as traditional Japanese tatami mat rooms, which I think is awesome. They were actually super kind to let me stay overnight um, after we had a really fun night out. So I really wanted to give these guys a shout out because I think this is such a cool business and in a part of Tokyo that most tourists probably don't know about. So if you guys are interested in staying there, I will of course leave a link in the description so you can check them out. Highly recommend going to Aleworks for a beer, picking up some whiskey at M's tasting room, and then crashing for the night at their lovely hotel. So that is it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and meeting some of my friends here in Tokyo. These areas are great places to visit if you want to get away from the tourist crowds and just kind of see how locals live. Let me know in the comments if you've ever been to any of these areas and what your impression was or what other more local areas of Tokyo you like to visit. As always, I'm sending you guys so much love. I hope you're having a fantastic day and keep being your own kind of beautiful. Bye guys.